Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. Happy Friday. I'm Sandra Guman Singh, topping our newscast. The Senate Committee on Culture and Historic Preservation may have gotten more than it expected on Friday after inviting a large group of testifiers to talk about Cokie Point on St. Thomas. According to testifiers, the same problems continue to plague the popular St. Thomas Beach. News 2's April Knight has more. The Senate well was full Friday morning as public officials and business owners testified on one of St. Thomas's most popular tourist attractions, Cokie Point Beach. Cokie Point has seen its share of shootings that victimized locals and tourists alike. On top of that is an underground market for regulated or illegal substances. According to the VIPD, increased police presence has improved the beach's general safety. Also, the sign to the beach where they phone you from for high visibility and deterrence. The Cookie Point Fish Assignment consists of officers conducting full patrol on both the private and government areas on the beach. Public Works was also praised for the new road leading into the beach area. But one business owner presented a harsher ground truth at Cokie Point, decrying the lack of police presence and faulty management. Police just watch everything go by and you attack police. Police are watching through it is and they don't show up. So I don't know what is police captain or whatever you say, what you say, I don't see it. And I'm not going to say I see it. Both government and private sectors agree that unregulated barkers remain a significant concern. According to testimonies, previous attempts to impose order have failed. As I understand the rules, barkers are supposed to wear some identification, showing the vendor for whom they work, and dress in some sort of uniform, if only a t-shirt, that represents the business. There are some who do. Unfortunately, there are far too many who dress whose dress and manner continues to be intimidating to visitors. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Well, later in the day, the Senate Committee on Culture and Historic Preservation also listened to the testimony on the status of security, maintenance, and general visitor experience in Smith Bay. In late January, Senator Kurt Violet introduced his paid leave for blood donation measure, Bill 31-0188, saying the territory urgently needed more blood to be donated, but blood donation may be on halt in the territory as a result of the Zika virus. Internationally, many countries are putting blood transfusion as well as blood donations on a standstill. Here's more. Zika is usually contracted via mosquito bites. When a mosquito bites an infected animal or person and then bites you, it can pass the disease to your blood through its saliva. It comes as no surprise that transmission of the illness through blood transfusions and sexual contact adds another concern to efforts to contain the outbreak. Brazilian health officials said on Thursday that they have confirmed two cases of transmission of the Zika virus through transfusions of blood from donors who have been infected by the mosquito-borne virus. As a result, some countries have tightened procedures for blood donations to protect blood supplies. If there's something like an um, outbreak that's been identified, then we stop accepting donations. The hospital gets its donations two ways, um, from blood drives here, or um, we're in-house, or actually from the American Red Cross through Puerto Rico. In Brazil, the Zika virus has been linked to thousands of babies being born with microcephaly. Earlier this month, health officials in Texas announced that a traveler who had returned to Dallas from Venezuela apparently had infected a sexual partner with the Zika virus. CDC has issued new guidelines suggesting that pregnant women avoid contact with semen from men who have recently returned from areas infected with the Zika virus. The Virgin Islands Department of Health released statements imploring that safe sex is always best and that women trying to become pregnant at this time should wait momentarily until the Zika virus is eradicated. On February 3rd, scientists in India stated that they have developed the world's first vaccine against the Zika virus. Stephanie Brown, News 2. Erica Parsons of Juan Luis also stated that the blood, blood bank in Puerto Rico that provides the hospital with blood is not in operation right now and that blood donations from the mainland is being used instead. Coast Guard and British Virgin Islands law enforcement seized 52 pounds of cocaine and other news is estimated to have a wholesale value of 
more than 797,000 and detained two men during an at-sea interdiction Tuesday near Tortola, BVI. While on a joint patrol, members of a Coast Guard maritime security and, security and safety team, accompanied by a BVI customs officer, detected and interdicted the suspicious vessel near Tortola uh, close to midnight on Tuesday. Following the interdiction, a total of 24 bricks of contraband were discovered and later tested positive for cocaine on board the 32-foot recreational vessel. BVI authorities took custody of the suspects, seized the vessel and contraband, and referred the matter for prosecution in the BVI. District Court Judge Curtis Gomez on Thursday sentenced Dwayne Foy, 26, to 17 months in prison for possession of a firearm. He was also sentenced to three years of supervised release, perform, perform 300 hours of community service, and also pay a $100 special assessment. According to the plea agreement filed with the court on April 24, 2015, the IPD officers conducted a traffic stop for illegal tint on a vehicle in which Foy was the passenger. Foy fled from the car, fell, and exposed the handle of a firearm. The officers recovered a Glock 9mm firearm. Foy is a convicted felon and was not authorized to possess a firearm. He was convicted of reckless endangerment and a felony in a felony in 2013. Also sentenced in district court was Damari Heiliger, 23 to 15 months in prison for his federal conviction of possession of a firearm with an obliterated serial number and 15 months in prison for possession of an unlicensed firearm under local law, according to the plea agreement filed with the court. On December 20, 2013, a federal search warrant was executed on the defendant's residence in St. Thomas. Two firearms with obliterated serial numbers were found in the defendant's bedroom. Since the firearms had obliterated serial numbers, the firearms cannot be lawfully registered and therefore Heiliger did not have the authority to possess those two firearms in the VI. Also, Donnie Williams, 32, of St. Thomas, was sentenced to 78 months in prison and 15 years of supervised release for possessing child pornography. Judge Gomez also ordered Williams to register as a sex offender, perform 400 hours of community service, pay a fine of $5,000, pay $27,000 in restitution, and a special assessment of $100. On October 8, 2015, Williams pleaded guilty to one count of possessing child pornography. According to court records, Williams used his laptop computer to download more than 600 child pornography images from a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network. Those images included adults having sexual intercourse with pre prepubescent females. Turn our attention to the mainland. The U.S. Labor Department announced Friday that the U.S. unemployment rate is now at 4.9 percent. That's the lowest it has been in the last eight years. Experts said it was a solid report, but noted there are also a few warning signs for the American economy. As experts and rivals point out, hiring is slowing down. Back in December, the economy gained more than 260,000 jobs, and economists projected another almost 200,000 would be created last month. But today's report shows the actual number came in below expectations, adding just over 150,000. Let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange with our Stock Market Watch. Taking a look at the numbers there, we can see everything down. The Dow 211, NASDAQ 146, S&P 500 also down at 35. Coming up on News 2, today you might have seen an unusual number of people wearing red. That's because they're taking part in a national campaign. We'll have more. Welcome back. Today, you might have seen an unusual number of people wearing red, and that's because they're taking part in a national campaign to bring down the numbers when it comes to heart disease in women. It's a nationwide event, but here in the Virgin Islands, we made a pretty good showing for the cause. New Susie April Knight has more.
It's National Wear Red Day, and women across the country are taking part in a massive awareness campaign against heart disease. In the Virgin Islands, both women and men are marking the event. The Senate building on St. Thomas made a big showing, where lawmakers and employees rose to the challenge under the leadership of Senator Jeanette Millen Young. Back in the 29th legislature, I had put in legislation that passed to have the Virgin Islands recognize Wear Red Day. It's really spreading throughout the Virgin Islands. Many people have already posted on social media themselves wear red. Proper nutrition, of course, is a key factor in maintaining heart health. The Senate staff got a healthy serving of knowledge on the right types of food to keep the heart happy. Various senators' offices also took part in a competition for who has the most elaborately decorated door, featuring tips on heart health and facts on heart disease. This door is a factual door. It tells you a lot of information. It's trying to encourage us that we ought to eat healthy. It shows you the types of foods that we need to eat. It shows you what you want to stay away from. It tells you here to eat less of the solid and trans fats, the saturated fats. And then there's this, a memory wall remembering those who lost the battle against heart ailments. And so you see some of the employees have posted up uh, I go red four, and they put either their aunt, their mother, someone's name. It is a commemorative uh, day in observance of those who have lost the battle and those who continue to fight it. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Earlier this morning, Senator Kurt Viola spoke with 12th grade students at the St. Croix Central High School on taking responsibility for their academic achievements and preparing for success in their lives. Senator Viola, who's the Vice Chair of Education, Workforce Development and Finance, asserted that strong partnerships between parents, teachers, and administrators will make a big difference in the success of students in the territory. The senator and former principal will be providing further information on academic success to 12th grade students attending the educational complex on Tuesday, February 9th. The Virgin Islands Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Council will be holding a teen workshop entitled Youth Wise Up. And that event will take place tomorrow, February 6th, on St. Croix at the University of the Virgin Islands Great Hall. Here's more. We're very excited about our event tomorrow, which is the Youth Wise Up. It is an event that we host annually in recognition of Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. And so the hopes for the event is to bring all teens together to address the issues that, you know, teens are facing on a day-to-day -day basis, many of which have to do with healthy relationships, unhealthy relationships, some form of intimate partner violence, and then even substance abuse and how that increases the risk factors for unhealthy relationships. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast comes your way next.